Welcome to to Shade and Mystery City. I'm your girl, Treese. It's Nels. And today we are here to do our recap of Before the 90 Days, Season 7, Episode 5, Brave New Worlds, okay? And it was a lot of braveness in here because I don't know how some of these situations I just, you know, I, I might not have been able to get through. But it was given you ain't scared of the consequences like you should be. Right. So we appreciate y'all being here. Shade Squad, thank you for listening to us and allowing us to keep growing and glowing. Please, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Yes, and y'all be listening. Y'all y'all doing it, so we appreciate it. And um, like I said, y'all continue to just follow us on all platforms. I do see we are we are growing on Twitter. We're growing on uh, what's the one with the the, the TikToking? Uh, <laughs> we're growing on IG. So we appreciate y'all for listening to us. We might be growing on Facebook. It's I ain't gonna lie to you. Book, it's giving it's giving that book face thing. That book face thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> that I hardly check anymore, but I'm gonna get better about it, y'all. I'm gonna get bad about it. Um, but yeah, y'all, let's it's a lot to get into, so let's go ahead and get into this episode. Um, I already told Nails we're gonna uh save more on the face for later because I got a few choice words that I need to use, and we're not 15 minutes in yet. So, yeah, y'all, let's get into it and let's get shady. Nails is favorite. I do. They're, de- they're definitely the cutest couple. They're, they're, they're definitely the cutest. Um, so we start off with Tiger Lily and Adnan. Um, we get to their wedding celebration. Tiger Lily, just like me, is floored. I not did his big one. Okay. He did, he did his big one. One. He said his wife likes luxury things and expensive things. And he had to make a huge. And can, and can I just say this? I know that I said earlier, why is she not worried about a prenup? Why is she just marrying this man blindly? I so she got from one bank to the next. Right. I not got some money. If y'all ain't picked up on that little. I not got the money because I, I don't, that, believe, I don't I believe Tiger Lily paid for this. I knew that from when they pulled up in the. uh the uh, Wasn't it a Rose Royce? Might have been, child. Might have been. Well, he said normally in Jordan, you know, you have one outfit for the entire ceremony. Not them, though. Okay. They came in in one outfit and they have to change, okay, into another for the ceremony to be presented to everybody. Um, Now, he is in the changing room walking around with no shirt on. And she was like, oh, I love how she did it, though. She didn't get upset. She didn't get angry. She said, oh. Well, I'm going to walk around with my shirt off. He's like, no, baby, it's because I'm a guy and and you're a woman and I'm going so much. She's like, oh, okay, well, then I can put on my bathing suit and I'll put on my bikini. Like, put your damn shirt on. Okay. That's exactly what he did. He he got the memo. Put your damn shirt on. Because if I can't walk around like that in front of men, why are you walking around like that in front of women? Right. So then, you know, he's rushing her and to change. I'm not going to lie. No shade. Shay gives me, and I know Love and Marriage Huntsville is off right now, but Shay gives me sunny vibes. Shay gives me, I was your esthetician. I am not your friend. And I the way she be giving that little side eye to eye nod, you better watch Shay Tiger Lily. That's all I'm gonna say. Ooh, okay. Um, so then he's rushing her to change her clothes. But she's like, I can't change my clothes because you and all the guys are in here trying to change your clothes. So she went and sat down. I thought she, she was like, I wasn't even mad at her. She was like, I'm annoyed. And I'm better. She's better than me because when I'm annoyed, I can't keep quiet. I, if I keep quiet, you you see in my actions that I'm annoyed. No, Trust the way she, 
sitting, the way she was sitting was, don't worry, I wait. Right. Whereas uh, if it would have been me, I would have been slamming cabinets. You would have known something. Why are you putting so much energy behind everything? You would have known I was annoyed. You would like you would have had to check up on me, okay? She said it made her feel like he believes, you know, um, like this is like this is gonna be their future where the woman is below him and you know she's supposed to wait. And that's not really what is given. So finally. Adnan kicks everybody out so Tiger Lily could get dressed. But as soon as he walks out the door, he's knocking on the door telling her to hurry up. Then when he gets inside, you know, he starts talking mess. And she's like, sir, I couldn't even start getting ready until you got out. OK, then Shay is basically like, you should have let her get ready first. So then a photographer comes in and he's like, you know, it's time. And he was like, I know, but let my queen get ready. OK. I was like, okay, I know that's right. Then he apologized to her. I was like, okay. And she was like, you know, I love this man. She was like, this is my man, my man, my man. She was like, even if he was a serial unaliver, as long as he ain't put me in no skin suit or making a skin suit out of me, I think we Gucci. I let him stick around. I was like, that's what last night did, huh? Mm -hmm. um, then they walked out to present themselves. Um, she said that she is proud to call um this man her husband and her his wife and she's feeling like royalty um so and then she looked like royalty she actually looked good and that, again know. what did i tell y'all last recap i said all she needed was a good scoop and this one she had a b net she had a b but when i tell you that made all the difference that girl looked good with a yes, t she did. yes okay. she did. it made him shut the hell up he mm -hmm. was like i lost my words um, Cruz is enjoying the damn party. He said he can see the love now. And Shay said that she's also enjoying the party, but it's giving the vibe that it's all about Adnan. So she, I don't know. She don't, I don't think she really see it, see it for them for real, but I love, he did, he really did do an amazing job with this wedding. He did. He did. He did. All right, y'all. Are, are you done with them? Mm -hmm. Niles and Matilda or a scammer as Chanel likes to call her uh, now we see Niles he getting ready to pack for his journey to Ghana um, he done packed this necklace that he bought for her but he ain't got no ring even though he's supposed to be getting married he, said he ain't get married maybe it's cheaper if he get it over there Changed. you remember maybe it's, cheap. maybe it's cheaper for him if he get it over there I don't know maybe he don't plan oh, to get it. He, it. he knows he hasn't been straightforward with Matilda about this wedding that she's planning. Notice wedding that she's planning. It's it's very solo dolo. It's not like an odd non situation where he's actually planning it and she, you know, it, it's not the it's not the same. It's not we are not the same. Yeah, I, she is me, a Martian. I okay. love the fact that literally all Tiger Lily had to do was show up. Right. Dresses um, everything taken care of. So he prefers to wait until he knows for sure that Matilda can handle living with someone with autism. And I understand, I, I think his concern, I'm going to say this. I think, his concerns. I, well, I was going to say that I think that I'm sure, and we're going to get into that, but basically he talks about how his family doesn't really accept Matilda. And I, I think. Say, just like I do, that she's a scammer. Well, not only that, I think he's frustrated because he works. He feels very self-sufficient. And I think that this is just my my opinion, and it may be unpopular. I think that his family views him as because of his disability or, or him being special needs, they view him as like he can't make good decisions. And so regardless if this is the person he loves it, whether she be a scammer or not um i can understand how that can be hurtful to him because he's out here functioning you know what i mean he's what i i get what you're saying and it's I, and i'm sure it's valid but even if he didn't have autism being that this is his first girlfriend First time ever being in love. I think even if he didn't have autism, 
the family would still have the same concerns because this is your first love first time ever having a girlfriend and now you want to go all the way across the country to go meet this girl you want to marry her let me say it could have been a girl down the block just because she's your first girlfriend you're going to feel like you ain't marrying that girl that's just your first girlfriend well i will say to nels's point and when he does talk about the family um in production ask him you know about his family's opinion and we see, and they're like, well, does it hurt you? And that's this is when we see his, I, for me, this is when we see his bluntness come out. And he's like, well, what do you, he says something to production, like, well, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Or something, I said, oh, <laughs> not us being nasty. Y'all know I can't stand no nasty attitude person. I don't, I don't know what you got going on with you. <laughs> You cannot look. Y'all saw how I gave Brian the business last week. I don't care what you got going on with you. That does not give you a right to be nasty. <laughs> I tell my six-year-old son that I don't care if you're sick. I don't care. If... That does not give you a right to be nasty. So. It's giving, um, damn, what is her name? Who? The one that has anxiety, and that's why she. Statler? Yeah. yeah Miss Statler. Yeah. Um, I, so I got excuses to be nasty. Right. So um, basically, he's experiencing an array of emotions as he prepares to board his flight. Um, Niles shares about, as he's going through the airport, he shares about his coping uh, techniques that he uses, which is, I guess it's called stimming. Um, again, this is why I love it. Honestly, y'all, it really is not the characters anymore. I really could care less about these people half the time. I literally continue to watch the show because I feel like I'm still learning, and especially now that I'm about to... <laughs> Which got a passport and I need the international travel. You know what I'm saying? I like learning about other cultures. But outside of that, y'all, I, I can't tell you I'll be doing this forever, but hey. Um, so, you know, basically, um, stimming is a technique, I guess, to help relieve some of the anxiety and the, you know, from the overstimulation. Um, so they introduce Matilda. We see her in Ghana. She's helping her mother sell plantains, which I can't stand. No shade. Uh, Nels loves them. Um, and we learned that um, I thought, see, again, another fun fact, y'all. One city, city mm -hmm. is equal to eight cents in U.S. dollars. Y'all, I'm about to go over to Ghana and live like a damn queen, okay? Um, you sound like Lauren right now. I know. And that's what I thought about when I watched it. I said, me and Lauren would be in it, throw it in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Matilda lets us know that, what is it? Off Niso. Oh, I didn't. I, I, I didn't do well, that. that's the city that she's from in Ghana. Or oh, Offenso, 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 Offenso. Thank you. Um, I was talking about the brothers' names. I was like, no, yeah, no, I ain't no, no, I ain't getting none of their names. Um, so Offenso was boring. There's no club or restaurants. Um, she's looking forward to the opportunity to start a life in America with uh Niles. She's excited about meeting him in real life. Um, her friends ask about him and what she likes about him, and so. You know, basically, they're like, was that her brothers? I think so. Oh, so they like, so they just over here eating free food, and I'm trying to sell it. You don't go. No, that was yeah, that's because it was the brothers. <laughs> uh, so basically, they like, are, are is he sending you money? And I, but that's why I believed it was friends because I was like, I feel like the brothers would know that. No, that's why they was like, you ain't you ain't spending it with us. Mm. And of course, she's like, what type of woman would, what type of woman would I be if I didn't take his money? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what type? A, so, not a scammer. You stupid. Um, and so basically she shares that he's autistic. She said many people in Ghana don't understand autism and some think it's a curse. Um, we see her give the money that she made to her mom and learn that, you know, her father passed away. Apparently he was a carpenter. Um, and so she tells her mother that she plans to go pick up Niles the next day in Accra. Accra. I was getting ready to say Accra. Um, she said, so yeah, so, but apparently this is a six hour bus ride away. So they plan to stay in a hotel there and then they plan to return for their wedding in Ghana. Which or off the surprise, off, surprise, 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 right? Um, and so yeah, she tells her mama, I need you and Unc um to go ahead and get everything together 
fuss while we gone. I said, look at the entitlement of it all. But again, it's a different culture. But I was like, how nice it must be to just sit back and you don't have to do nothing. Yeah, because you're getting the bride price. Oh, that's true. Um, and then ne to Nels's point, um, she talks about the bride price and how it can it contains money, it can contain earrings, clothes, shoes, whatever they request. That's the price. And, and Ingrid. Oh, I will say he kind of redeemed himself a little bit. With flowers. Huh? With flowers. With flowers and toys and yeah, but you came and, when I told you not to. Say, I think he humbled himself a little bit. You might disagree, but I think I, once he saw that she really wasn't rocking with him, I think he humbled himself a little bit because last week he I was a, he I was a, nasty. I would have been I would have been aggravated that he came even though I told him not to. I know uh, you would have. I, I literally thought about you and I said Chanel. Flowers, not flowers are not toy or not and you didn't call me before you came over you sitting make, outside my house like a crazy man yeah yeah like hit me up before you come like that's like i get i get it but i couldn't see past the fact that he just popped up to be honest with you like i literally told you i would need some time and i don't want you to meet my son yet and then you come over like you forcing yourself with a toy for my son no i'd have been I'd have, been like, I'd have been like, I would have been on the phone like, I told you I need a space, so come back when I'm ready. I wouldn't have came Anyways, because we're skipping ahead. Um, so Brian, okay, says that, you know, the night before was tense. They did sleep in the same bed, but it was super cold. They slept with their backs to one another. Now, I don't know. I mean, does that have to mean that it's cold? Because I do that. And I just do it for comfort. I'm not trying to be cold, but what? sleep with my bag towards my person. You sleep on your back towards your no, back? No, sleep with my back towards them. Oh, yeah. That means you're being cold? I don't think so. I need, oh. I don't, I don't want to breathe. The, I'm not trying to be funny. I, I don't want to say I want to breathe the same air, but. My person snores at night and sounds like a grizzly bear. And I have to turn my back to that to be. Oh, able yes. To and see, that's what I'm saying. I do it so I can put my leg up and have more space and comfort. For otherwise, otherwise, I'm going to have my knee all in your your area and you're going to be not too happy. And, 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 and I think I'm so paranoid, too, about and this is going to sound so weird. I think I'm so paranoid, too, about getting sick because I've seen like lately, not lately, but like in the last couple of years since Jalen, because mm -hmm. I realized you literally, and obviously the vid, and I realized you laying in set and sharing the same air, like just being turned towards them and breathing the same air. So no, I, I face the other way. Cause if you are ill, I might not leave the room, but I'm, I'm not face like I'm not breathing the same. Okay, so now I don't feel too bad. He just he reaching. Um, well, maybe she maybe she was actually cold though. Um, so he basically said that he's feeling some type of way about how she reacted. Um, and he feels like, you know, she's not really she she's lacking compassion. So she's packing up to go home and see her son. Um, and he wants to go get something to eat before taking her home. And she feels like, um, you know, that she's learned a lot in the last couple of days. Um, and basically about how he used to be a dealer, how he lied about his age and how his wife set him up. She says she wants to believe that there's more to him than his past, but she just don't know how the hell to move forward past this. So at the table, I, I thought they was getting food, but really, it looked like they did ice cream sundaes. Like, if I'm hungry, no, she got the aki bowl. Acai, acai, acai. You, you, you oh, acai. Acai. <laughs> I call it aki. Acai. <laughs> that's gonna help you, sir. I don't know nothing about it. You know. <laughs> I got to learn how I pronounce it because I ain't never going to order it. It's good. It is so good. It's really good. It's really it looks good. too healthy for me. It, no. Mm -mm. no. I mean, it probably is. But I'm sure there's like sugars and stuff. 
if they did like something like that with like pomegranate, I'd do it. But you ask for what you can put whatever you want in it. Oh, okay. But you know, I don't be eating yogurt and smoothies and stuff like that. No way. It's really good. It's That's really not good, good to me. That's anyways. Uh, <laughs> let's move on from the Aki. <laughs> the Aki. The Aki. <laughs> um so basically, you know, he told her that, you know, he did want to talk about some heavy things. Um, you know, he feels like she was judging him for his past and saying, you know, the only reason why he probably doesn't deal to this day is because he can't walk. And he said that that hurt. And she said, if that hurts you, then I apologize. I was like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. Um, and he told her that, you know, he doesn't want that life anymore and, you know, he'll never deal again then ask if he can stop by later to meet her son so that you know they can have so not such a heavy conversation and she was like you know does she need some time to process and think on it apparently this is something they've always talked about him meeting the kid and now he's feeling some type of way because she don't want that no more he tried he's to hit her with the miguel he said he wanted to come through and chill he said just say you will okay <laughs> will be left out in your car. Um, <laughs> and you know, he said that he feels like she's taking a step back. Now, she said that she was waiting for Brian to apologize about you know hiding his past, but that didn't happen. Um, and she doesn't know if they can, you know, move past, like you know, get past pass this and move forward with their relationship. So then Brian decides to go to a florist to get Ingrid some sorry flowers. He said he knows that she asked for space, but he feels the need to stop by um, and let her know that he cares. Send a text. Say yeah. thinking about you or something. Send a text. And I'm thinking about you. Or get some flowers delivered. You don't have to be the one to bring them. I don't want to see your face right now. Now that's exactly what he did. It does look a little remote, huh? It does look a little remote. Like it, oh, it gives me the vibe. Wait till we're both in good standing. Don't come to my house. But they might see. Okay, I'm about to play advocate, y'all know. Here she come. Hear me out though. He might not have been in good standing if he if he ain't drop off them flowers and them toys. That definitely helped. I understand what you're saying and you you feel it's intrusive and I absolutely understand where you're coming from. I'm just giving you because we seen she I don't think she was reaching out to him. I don't think she That's was crazy. like and she still was like I don't know how to move forward cuz he didn't apologize. He still didn't apologize. She oh, said, he did got a long way to go. <laughs> he did was give you flowers. I love roses. So buy some. You stupid. Well, got, I feel like everybody kind of got some roses except Faith, the person that deserved them. But her man probably got ten dollars left. <laughs> Don't do that. He had forty six dollars, and he Whoa. was blowing through it. He <laughs> was blowing through it. Okay. Um. Now he showed up at this girl's house. He did. Have the flowers for her and brought a gift for the son. So clearly, he didn't give a damn what she said and plan to see her son anyway. Um, she's feeling like, you know, maybe he redeemed himself. So she's going to introduce him to Arthur. Now, can I say that's the part that bothered me? What? Is the fact that if even if I would have let you come and I would have accepted your flowers and I would have met you outside, I would have stood firm. You're not meeting my child. Mm -hmm. Like there, you wouldn't have been coming in. I would have brought the toy to, toy to him, and I would have gave it to him. And then when I feel like I'm ready to introduce you, I would have said, "This is the man that brought the toys for you." But you wouldn't have came in my house and met my child. And I know people might that might be unpopular opinion, and people might be like, "Oh," but when it comes to my child and boundaries, I, that's one thing I was looking at her sideways for folding on because I wouldn't have folded on that. Well, he's struggling getting through the door to meet the son in the first place okay because it's super not wheelchair accessible 
It's not, um, it's not wheelchair friendly at all. And I don't know if he got little nieces and little nephews. I ain't gonna lie. He really did do good with the little boy. He did. He did. He did but that's another reason why if I don't know how I feel about you and I don't know if this is going to go anywhere and I'm not, I'm still not sure. Like if I'm really feeling you, I'm not letting you meet my child. Well, I can appreciate the fact she introduced him as Uncle Brian. Yes. It was given, it was giving them old ladies back in the day. Right. It's your uncle. That's your uncle. It's got so many damn uncles. Mm -hmm. Um now Brian yeah, said that yeah, Uncle Brian spent the night. Exactly. <laughs> and, slept, and slept in mama's room. Right. Um now Brian is glad that he came by, you know, because now he's picturing this life together as a family. Um, and she says this is the side of Brian that she wants to see more often. And then given that next episode. Cause he got some more to tell her. He got confessions. Um, it's too just many. when you thought he could say it, all he can say. This is too much. It's just too much. All right, let's get over to another crazy person. Um, so we're gonna get into Ooh, I'm so glad you got her. <laughs> I know I was getting ready to call her brain. Her name is Renee. Um, you know, I put it, I have to put it in my phone as Renee. I spell it as Renee. Yeah, because if not, I want to call her and I spell it like it's supposed to be, and it messes me up every time. Um, so Chitty realizes that things have been off with Renee since he told her about his vow of celibacy. However, he's thankful that she's even still talking to him. So he feels bad um, that what he said hurt her. He compares a life without her to a fish out of water. As a Pisces, I understand what that means. Um, so Renee says she feels betrayed by Chitty, but says although she believes He's being misguided by his faith. She loves him anyway. And I said, oh, this is not going to go far. Because what you're not going to do is tell somebody their religious beliefs is bullshit. It's basically what you're saying. So she apologizes for becoming angry at the market, which he likes, um, and asks Shitty if he's regretful for misleading her in the beginning. Um, he says he's not because that's who he was then. And this is who he is now. And people are prone to change. And one of my favorite YouTubers, I hear her say it all the time, shout out to Jovi Beauty, who you were yesterday is not half who you have to be today. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. It's given yesterday's price is not today's price. Today's price, right. <laughs> and you can absolutely change your mind, change your feelings, and not feel no two ways about it, okay? So, um, yeah, so basically she asked Chitty to be more affectionate with her. Um, even if they're not having sex. And so he agrees to do that. And so then we see them go to, um, what is it, a conservation center? Um, so she can see some monkeys. And, you know, she's happy that he's showing her more affection. Um, and then she wants to know more about the story, about how he went blind. So he repeats the same story that he's already gave us. Um, but we do learn well, he was diagnosed with glaucoma. Yeah, I didn't, so what I didn't know was that he got hit in the eye with Apple. And then a year later is when his eyes, he started to lose his eyesight. I thought it happened kind of immediately. I did too. Um, and then we also didn't know that, you know, he was diagnosed with glaucoma. Mm -hmm. So they don't know whether it came from that. This did see, says, you know what? And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the best at my words sometimes. Like when it comes to like awkward situations, like when people are grieving and or it's like an emergency situation. Oh, I suck at that. I suck at that. Like I will see somebody on a stretcher and be like, are you OK? And that's pro they're probably not OK if they're on the stretcher. Right. But it's just my natural. I, I just don't want to say nothing because I don't know what to say. Right. Because I don't know what to say. So. So anyway, um, basically. She's like, you know what? I feel like this was just spiritual divineness. And you believe in God. And I feel like if I, you weren't blind, I wouldn't be here. Because if you could see what I actually look like, you wouldn't be here. I love when he said, <laughs> she says bizarre and weird things. <laughs> he said, no, but what it was for me. She lives in an alternate reality. Yes. You know? <laughs> and he worries how he's supposed to trust her to leave exactly. him. And I said, well, brother, your concerns are valid. <laughs> They're very valid. Now let's get on to these stupid folks. I can't, I just don't care for her. I know she got a sad story, but she's strange. 
<sighs> Vea and Sunny. Um, so she's packing, getting overwhelmed, thinking about the flight and leaving, and, and literally gets emotional. Um, this chick is worried about the flight and not the fact that she's bringing her ex-boyfriend along, and the current boyfriend has no idea. Right. Um, but she said, you know, if her ex wasn't going with her, she probably wouldn't be brave enough to get on the flight at all. Um, Can I just say this? Hmm. I think that ex-boyfriend is, um, he's one of those, he don't want her, but he don't, and this is just me, this is my opinion, again, this is our channel, this is my opinion, but if y'all don't agree, respectfully, y'all can disagree in the comments, but he gives me the vibe, he don't want her, but he don't want nobody else to have her, because mm -hmm. there's just no way in my mind, even if I was still friends with my ex, that I'm going to tell you, you bringing me on a trip is a good idea when you're going to meet your new person. That just doesn't make sense. If I'm a real friend to you, um, he don't want her to be with nobody. And he's just going to sabotage this. This is what it is. But he don't want to be with her. So that's what makes it even worse. Because he don't want to be with her either. Well, she's a dumbass for allowing it. She's a dumbass for inviting him in the first place. Uh, I um, like she so, couldn't call a homegirl or something. We had a homegirl that was talking. Right. Uh, so she goes to pick him up. Um, she told him that the game plan is when they land, Rory is to go to the hotel and she's going to go with Sonny. And during that time, she'll let him know that Rory's there. That is a lot better than having him see him as soon as you touch down. That's really what I thought the plan was. Um, and Rory is already talking about, you know, if Sonny gets upset or come at her wrong, you know, basically he's going to have to step in. Now, you know, she's really getting nervous talking about how she doesn't want this to be a setback for him proposing. And Rory thinks it's hilarious. He's like, girl, you think you really going to propose? Absolutely not. Now, when you find out you burnt your ex, he's going to think you're still screwing your ex, girl. Mm -hmm. No, he's not proposing. It's giving too close for comfort. So they get to the airport, hop on the plane. And, you know, now she's thinking about, hey, this might look kind of messy. This might be kind of messy. Nah, a little too late for that. Um, now Sunny, on the other hand, is at the hotel, you know, getting ready for her arrival, putting down rose petals, um, you know, and she's just gonna mess up the mood with her ex being there. He also, right. and did you see that she likes black rose petals? Yeah, I was just about to say, he also got her some black roses, apparently, that's her favorite. Now, uh and he said, that's a little weird, but I did it. But that's a little weird. Exactly. Uh, it what, is. He said, it's, whatever it, you it's like. Giving, it's giving golf vibes, but you know. It's whatever you like. Um, so, Vea told Rory, you know, to come up with a code word so that they know, you know, basically that he can exit the building because she doesn't want there to be any chance of Sonny seeing him. While this man, on the other hand, is considering putting a ring on it. OK, this girl is literally trying to hide him in the airport so that Sonny doesn't see him. And it, from what it looked like, it looked like Rory was like, the hell, I'm not about to be sitting in here hiding from this boy. Like he was still ready to walk through the uh, through the glass doors. My thing is, does Sonny, does, I want to know if Sonny knows what Rory looks like already. Because I would think he does. Clearly he does. He does. He does. You know why he does? Because Rory was commenting on his pictures. He was in the comments. He showing up. Do you know what the hell he looked like? Yeah, dumbass. <sighs> All right. If you're gonna bring a man, bring one that's not petty to be up under your man's comments. Bring somebody that. like Cruz. Right. Or Shay, that's real incognito. Well, Shay is a girl. Oh, I was just saying. But <laughs> well, you said don't bring Shay around. You said you got to watch Shay. That's why I said she real incognito. <laughs> you said, <laughs> are you sure you want? You just left a man like this. I bet you are questioning my decisions. <laughs> Can't deal with you. <laughs> the way you looking at this. 
looking at him like he a snap. He not bad looking. He not. But again, I keep my eye on her. All right. Lauren and Faith. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let me get ready. Fan ready. Lauren is despicable. Okay. Um, we know Lauren has learned that he has contracted gonorrhea. Um, he does his research and finds out that he can't kiss Faith. He believes it'll take seven to ten days for him to get rid of this or you know, for it to clear up. Um, and he's not really concerned, um, but he does worry about telling Faith the truth. Um, he says what that Faith he was he was already saying stuff was spewing out of him. So well, I told you that the, the last when he said he had the, uh, the discharge. But my thing is, he was still trying to get down. I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one that gave it to the girl. No, versus it's, it's the other it's way around. Yeah, versus the other way around. Yeah, because you I, out here got stuff spewing out of you, and you were still trying to get down. You wasn't concerned until the girl actually confirmed that you got it, sir. So um, he said <laughs> that you know I faith has a, you are terrible. Faith has a fun day plan, so he's hopeful it won't ruin their day. Right. Um, so she's getting all the feels when she's with Lauren and likes how comfortable she's like, I feel so comfortable with you. Cut it out. <laughs> um, Faith brings up their conversation with Mama Ding the night before and lets him know that she wants to make sure they get to know each other better before he decides he just gonna move there, um, or basically stay there because it gives me the vibe. Lauren ain't even got enough uh, money for a ticket back home. So Lauren worries that all his progress, they again, he has $46 and not even that because he spent some of it. He was spending it. So um, he worries that all the progress they made will be lost once he shares the news. So we see them go swimming. I don't know if this was, it clearly wasn't a beach, but it was, I guess, a lake or something. I had it. Oh, you know what I did notice, though? What? Tata is selling her banana chips in the wrong damn place. She needs they to go sell them in vanilla. $10, did you see? Mm -mm. The banana chips there was ten dollars each. You better go. You tell tell you in the wrong damn place. What 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 what's what's homie name? Her dude? Jane. You was, for, you was looking for a business venture. Nah, blah, business venture. But what you call no, the name of the place is Wawa it's Wawa Dam. Oh, okay. So it was a dam. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically they're swimming. She says this makes her feel more, you know. Puts her in her feminine energy. It was um, given that they was in a Disney movie, right? Um, so Faith believes that Lauren's honesty about his financial situation shows that he's serious about their relationship. And you know, Lauren is showering her with compliments and tells her she's the girl of his dreams. Before he decides to drop the news on her that they can't kiss, and it wasn't even like she was looking for a kiss. Yeah. That's what made it so even more awkward. But I guess he before because I guess he was like. Well, this is a kissable moment where you you kind of feel, and so he was like, "You probably think this is a kissable moment, right?" And he was like, "Well, we can't kiss." But even still, it was just so awkward because he's it's not like. I hate the fact that he's always smiling. <laughs> that bothers me too. That bothers no, me too. Mark, even when he said he has gonorrhea, he's <laughs> right. <laughs> You're so right. Um, so yes, yeah, I so love him in the car. She was like, "Why are you smiling?" <laughs> right. It was, you know, what it was giving. You know how when you pass the others and they're like, <laughs> right. Bless her heart. Um. So yeah, no. Basically, he lets her know, "Hey, we can't kiss because I got got a Bria. Um, she's a little confused. She's like, "What's that?" And he's like, "This is sexually transmitted disease." Uh, because you know, I said so. Faith. Um, so Lauren has to admit that he slept with his friend, um, who he told Faith he was helping, helping in ways other than what he told Faith. And Faith is upset and accuses Lauren of cheating. Lauren tries to gaslight her. Clinic. What happened? Helping her need a trip to the clinic. Right. Um, and so Lauren tries to gaslight her and say it wasn't cheating because they hadn't met yet. So she's like, no, my ninja, we been no, talking. Right. This man don't, sh you know what? I love the fact that she was like, no, no, no like, no, I, I, no, it was, it was definitely cheating. I was like, you better tell him, girl. And we talked for the last six months. Don't try to play in my face. 
Um, so he says he does feel a little bit guilty and Faith is like, you know, I feel betrayed. So we see them on this awkward ass car ride home, right? Um, and she tells him in the Philippines, huh? He's like, well, I think he even said that. He's like, well, we got this long, awkward ride. Cause you made it that way. Well, not even that. He's still smiling through it all. <laughs> Did he so, see at the end he was smiling when he was like, I really messed up. We're right. probably breaking up. <laughs> that shit annoys me too. All right. Um, so we, you know, she tells him in the Philippines they call what he has too low, and there's a chance he may have AIDS. Okay. Um I Lauren mean, you know, I, mean, I mean, if you catch one, you can catch you can surely catch the you other. Can catch them all. So Lauren reassures her it's not that serious, okay? You um, you ain't you know you had gonorrhea, you the one who gave it to the girl. Right. So and if, you let stuff spew out you. Your thing and didn't even get yourself checked, and you was trying to screw me. And look, and and he so then he has the nerve to ask her, Well, am I the only person that you know that's contract contracting gonorrhea? And she's like, I don't hang around, I don't hang around bitches like that. My friends don't do that. She was like, she was like, anybody that that would that had that would be embarrassed, ashamed, and basically you Not here smiling. Here. <laughs> so um and she's like and they would think your ex is contagious he is contagious he is so Don't she asked him baby. so she wants to know how many times he's had sex with this person he tells her twice and faith tells him that he wasn't serious about her lauren says she didn't ask and insists she had to have known that's what it was for me that's what really took me out when i said lauren i was getting fired up Sitting here watching this, I said, the nerve. You had to have known that I was sleeping with so many people that I contracted an STD and came over here and decided I was going to ambush you and live with you. And now I can't mess with you when he only there for, or was only supposed to be there for 20 days. And you can't mess with him for 10 until you get cleared up. And let's just be real. Do you even have enough money to buy the medication? Girl, I was thinking the same thing. I'm thinking this. Oh, maybe it's only like two, three dollars there. Anyway, so um, Faith says she trusted him, so she didn't suspect he was sleeping with someone else after they've been talking for six months. And Faith says she feels like a fool. She tells him she needs some space when they get back to the hotel. And Lauren knows that he messed up majorly, but shrugs it off with a smile and says he he's not sure what he can do to make it right. You need to get yourself right first. See, to me, this, like, Faith is like the female version of Niles right now mm. without, without autism. This is her first relationship. She's a little naive. Ex exactly. Ignoring the red flags. And I think even without having autism, his family would feel some, they would be concerned because. Mama Dean would feel the way if she knew he had an STD. It was. <laughs> They would definitely. They gonna know. He had that. He has no shame. He on TV talking about he done slept with everybody in their mama. He contracted an STD. He homeless and now he need to stay with her. He came to all the way over there with forty forty six dollars. He has no shame. And this, is, and this is one thing I will say about TLC. I appreciate y'all giving us different circumstances, situations, and exposing us to different types of people and walks of life. Well, however, what we don't need and what we don't ever need to make cute is us just being proud that we done caught caught whatever we done caught. And now we out here just being like, yeah, I caught it. Now that we're not going, that we're not going to normalize. That we're not going to know. I'm not down for it. It's so funny how he said, oh, I was like looking up how to get rid of it and all this other stuff. But the fact I that he I for a second thought he was thought it was going to self treat. I thought I, he wasn't going to take anything. The fact he he acting like like he ain't never had it before. But the fact that he's so chill and calm about it, I feel like this ain't his first time. I don't eat, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Talk about I was looking up ways to, sir. You probably an expert at this point. Oh, lying ass. Nasty. All right, y'all. Well, thank y'all for being here with us and going through this uh, couple that is Lauren and Faith and all these other uh, train wrecks. But we appreciate y'all being here. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you comment. Make sure that you subscribe. 
and hit the notification bell. And make sure you're following us on all the platforms, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Facebook, and the IG. And yeah, y'all, if y'all, you know, feel like you want to donate to the channel, help us, help us continue to grow, please go ahead and, you know, donations aren't, aren't required, but they are accepted. Cash app is below. But yeah, y'all, we thank you, appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next week for another round of foolishness of Before the 90 Days. Bye-bye. Good night.